I've been so busy with all the four rotor and three rotor stuff, I've forgotten about my first true love. As some of you may know, I did hit 30,000 miles in this. It was a major milestone for me, and I decided to treat her to some upgrades. If you've ever driven a Diablo, you'll know that it's very not useful. It's not like an Uricon or any of the modern cars that are very usable. We're doing something very exciting with Pioneer, who also modernized, I'm looking over at it, the three rotor with Apple CarPlay and all the other fun things. And so what we're going to do today is some of the most modern upgrades in one of the most classic cars, all with the stereo system. Pioneer and I were originally gonna do this with an install company. I wanted to preserve the original wiring. As weird as that sounds, I think you can understand when this car is now worth $350,000, you wanna keep even connectors on the original wiring. What are we putting inside of this? Well, Pioneer's Z-Series speakers, not only they're normal speakers like these, I shouldn't even call them normal, but also the tweeters. I didn't know that those were actually separate speakers. Pioneer really took some time and engineered the solution for this car. I get Z-Series two speakers on the doors as well as the little tweeters at the top. I didn't realize that those were separate speakers, but they are, of course, meant for higher range. These are meant for mids. They come with their own amp for all of the speakers. This is something new to me. And then a beautiful subwoofer as well with its own amp. Those of you that saw my video series on the Insight with the cheapest system will know that I did a pink noise analyzer, which is really, it looks like a graph over low to high across the graph. And when you put out that sound, and then you absorb it back in through a microphone, you'll see just how much the sound system adjusts or attempts to recreate the original intended sound. The Zero Series speakers already blow that away. It's ridiculous. I actually took one of the speakers out and plugged it in the Insight and held it to my face like this. And oh my God, the, the, the speaker is just absolutely nuts. It is a little bit beefier than the Sony ones that I have in there, but oh my God, the sound is so much more crisp. And I am not an audiophile. You guys know this. I'm a Taylor Swift, okay, maybe her best hits. Mariah Carey, all I want for Christmas is you. Uh, that's the type of guy I am right now. I can tell a massive difference in like the clarity. It sounds like the person is in the speaker versus kind of a muffled off in the distance. Massive difference. Well, this video isn't super technical, I do wanna show you guys the products being used. Number one, like I said, is the Z-Series speakers. The particular ones here are the TS-Z65CH. That's what you see right here. They got the little baby tweeters here, as well as the beefy two speakers here. So you got a total of four speakers, as well as a little bit of control between the tweeters and the speakers. Instead of like the Insight where I'm driving it from the head unit itself, I'm actually using an amp for all of these channels. So that's really badass to me. Over here, an amp specifically for a Z-Series subwoofer. This is a 10-inch subwoofer, but I'm gonna have to manufacture some sort of box. There are requirements and all that that I'll end up having to follow to make sure it sounds good. But the issue is making sure it works on the back side of the seat. I did measure it out and the speaker is capable of sitting very low at the bottom of the seat. It's gonna bump my lower spine, but that, oh my God, it's gonna sound amazing. That is a very, very nice subwoofer. Of course, like I said, both controlled by their own amps. What's being replaced from the Diablo? Well, there you go. That is one of the two front speakers from the original Diablo. Very narrow, and that's partially because the door is so thin because the window is so bulky. When you compare the manufacturing or the process, the makeup of this thing, you can see why this thing is just superior. I did a lot of reading up as to what the Z-Series is. It's a particular material and just really does a good job at trying to maintain the sound quality for quite a while. These tend to break down this kind of paper material. It certainly shows in the quality of the sound. The speaker, I'm sure, maybe sounded better when it first came out, but it's really not that good. In fact, the speaker was so bad that I ended up buying a really flat subwoofer off of Amazon and it was also a piece of crap, but it at least added and filled in some of the problems that I experienced with listening to this car. It genuinely sounds like the music is off in the car next to me. You know when you hear somebody next to you bumping music? That's what the Diablo sounds like at full crank on itself. As a side note, it is absolutely terrifying to work on a rare car that is worth uh, more than my life. And I found that pulling this piece up and praying, sure enough, reveals all of the existing tunnel for the wires. Anybody else out of the 152 that were made for the States, if you ever need this advice, you simply remove the weather stripping and just gently pull up 
on this kick panel area and everything is revealed. If you guys have ever considered <laughs> having a car like this or what the old Italians were thinking, uh, I, I don't know. Look at how complex such a simple car can be. Now, I will give them credit that this is a car that was designed in, in very hand-built limited numbers. So the thought process isn't very streamlined and that is kind of the charm about it. But look at all of this. Even the sound system is like a thing here, a thing there, a thing here, another little thing here. Crazy, absolutely crazy. But just to give you a glimpse of what it's like to wire this car properly. Oh my God, is it a pain in the ass. It's not gonna look like much, especially with the way Italians did their engineering to begin with. But I was able to fit the amp for the front speakers all underneath that. So that is actually sitting properly flat on the ground. It feels good because it was originally this and this is very flat and the other one is not. So I was able to tuck all of that, hide it in there, get it spliced in, get it fused in properly, and get it connected to the head unit. I am going to test everything now. Here is my very first test of both the woofer and the tweeter on this door with its little magic thing to control both of those. <laughs> this taken out just to make that all work. So I have that, this, and the amp all down here. Let's see what happens. Now in this case, that door is actually still the old speaker and the old tweeter. So I'm curious to see if I can measure a difference with speakers alone. I took the bezel off of that so it's easier to pull it in and out, but here we go. I hope I don't blow up my car. This is good. This is very good. I have to, every time it starts fresh, I have to remind it not to hit here. <laughs> That side's very clearly working with static. Okay, now it's radio. Let me try connecting with my phone. There we go. Pair. At least your uh, search history doesn't show up on here. Oh, I really don't have playlists. I don't have any music on my phone. But what I do have is a set of skills. My, one of my favorite songs to test right now is Eminem. Right, so this does not have a subwoofer. It is insanely clear to me that these speakers, mind you, this is just a tweeter and a woofer, which is just the normal size speaker that you see. Those two alone are driving all of that music. There is no sub yet installed. There's no amp for the sub installed. It is literally just the voice and mid-level speakers. That is how well these Z series speakers sound. Driven by an amp, I've played with them, like I said before, on my Insight, and they were very clear. That tweeter plus that woofer sounds so crisp and you can control the volume from there and really that little baby one is about voices and really high-pitched you know musical notes like a violin or something like that very 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 crisp i am extremely impressed i was reluctant at first i was like okay well you know what? this was a quality sound system and pioneer has brought a lot to the table this is just vastly different i could wire up the other two which is what i'm doing now and be done like i could actually bump fairly easily without the subwoofer but this whole system is just going to sound wonderful because at this point you start controlling what speaker does what part of the sound you know really high pitched stuff leave that to the tweeter mid level stuff the woofer and then subwoofer obviously below that you get to choose at what point each speaker does what that's really up to what you like to hear but these speakers phenomenal very 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 impressed the test I'm about to do is my favorite test because what you're hearing is being interpreted through a microphone on this camera and then of course audio processor on the camera. You can't really gauge as good of a system as this is the differences between the old speakers and the new ones. I will show you in visual representation just how different they are. To make this as fair as possible, I'm gonna make sure both windows are up because that window's down. Also to give you a really funny but accurate description of what's going on in these bars, look at this. <laughs> my horrible attempt at whistling, but it shows you what you're expecting to see or what noises you're hearing.
I'm not trying to do these tests to try and make the new stuff look good. I, I can hear it's so different. And so I finally figured out how to show just how different it is. Everything seems pretty normal. Everything seems pretty fine. But what's going on is on the old speakers, you can see that they have other notes playing and you can hear it. You can literally hear that. That is something that I was able to measure with my own ears, but I wasn't able to show with any of my previous tests. They just don't sound as crisp. Whereas on the good speakers, they sound very, very detailed. They really clearly hit every note. And that's what you see by those peaks are very pointy, exactly the note that is supposed to be being played. What's really fascinating to me is the old amp, multi-head unit, everything, stereo, whatever, just not the main front piece, had a total of a 10 amp fuse on it, meaning that it was controlling all of that as well as driving the speakers with a total of 120 watts. That is, uh, Pitiful, considering that these speakers, these four speakers together are capable of about 300, a little bit over 300 watts of total peak audio consumption or even power consumption, where their average is at 110, meaning that they would have almost blown the fuse on the other system if they were capable of doing that with no navigation, no other additional features, six CDs, player, all that other crap uh, would not have been able to run on the same circuit and get the full quality of audio that you are out of this amp in these speakers.